after the meeting with Peggy and Jim, Moody and I went home and we didn't commit to them right then and there. Although I knew from the very moment I walked out of their office that I wanted to participate in this. And I wanted to do what I could to, to say enough. Enough saying no to gay people for not, you know, for not fitting in. There's no room in our society for exclusion. And so when I knew that I had an opportunity to, to stand up and say no, or I had the opportunity to put my energy behind something that could challenge something that I perceived as in, unjust, uh, I had made up my mind. But that's not how relationships go. So we had to, Moody and I had to actually come to that same decision together. And so f that night after we left and you know the next day or so, we, we talked it out and I did my best to persuade Moody to, that this was a good idea. And I did my best to, um, you know, uh, soothe any issues that we saw might arise. So we, of course we were concerned about public visibility. We were concerned about what this might mean for our business. I would say we were worried about our business more than anything else. Um, we were worried about what our customers would think, if they would still be our customers, if we would lose business, if uh, we were going to, um, if the case itself would take away from our ability to run a business, you know, and, and what that might, what this distraction might mean for that. Um, so, you know, safety and our business and our livelihood, in addition to, you know, any potential stress that might come along with this. And we had to really decide if that was worth it. And I know that, you know, um, I was willing to put myself out in front right from the get-go. And I think, um, m I think my partner Moody was a little bit m more reserved with regard to that. And uh, it seemed scarier to him than it did to me. But uh, we, we came to the conclusion that it was the right thing to do. And we were the right people to do it. And if it's not going to be us, then who else would, would do it? We had an opportunity to, to make our voices heard, and, and we, it's just too good to pass up. It's too good to say no to. Um, and I think that had we said no, we would have forever regretted not standing up when we had the opportunity to. I couldn't imagine anybody else challenging the state of Utah for this. Um, I don't know, I didn't tell you earlier, but when Amendment 3 was being debated in the public realm before it was passed on, you know, uh, in 2004. Um, I, it was that whole conversation around George Bush and whatnot, it was Amendment 3 that helped draw me out of the closet. Um, I remember running down the street in the middle of the night and, and vandalizing my neighbor's yard signs that were in support of defining marriage as strictly between a man and a woman. So from the first time it was talked about in 2004, I felt this personal connection to Amendment 3 and I knew that it was unjust and it was not a valid law and it was not fair and, and so I knew from that very moment that it was something that could not stand the test of time. And so, you know, 10 years later when we had an opportunity to challenge it legally, um, for me it was an obvious choice. It couldn't be anybody else because I felt such a personal connection to the discrimination that Amendment 3 laid out. And, and I'm sure other people also feel that same connection. But in my mind, it was my connection that really drove me to say yes uh, to the case. And um, so I made up my mind. I finally, you know, Moody finally ended up making up his mind as well. And we called Peggy, our attorney, on the phone and said, sign us up. What do we need to do to bring this about? And, and so we, we, we started there. This was March 20th, I think, 25th, 2013. Uh, so when we told Peggy that we were going to do it, um, she said, great, we're going to file the complaint tomorrow. Uh, so we, early in the morning the next day, we... Um, we got in our car. Actually, we didn't have a car at the time. So early the next day, we went down to Peggy's office, and her assistant 
went with us down to the clerk's office to apply for a marriage license. Um, because what Peggy said is that we needed to go through the motions and attempt to actually get married before we had a valid legal claim that it was denied, that we were denied access to marriage. So we went to the clerk's office, we tried to apply, we filled out the paperwork, and, and the lady at, you know, at the clerk's office was so kind to us. You know, she was heartbroken, I think, to, see, to say no. She hated saying no, that we couldn't get married. Um, we, we handed her our application and she looked at us and she said, I'm, I'm really sorry. Right now, Utah law says that marriage is only between a man and a woman. She handed us a little white piece of paper that had a cutout of Utah law, of Amendment 3, essentially. And she said, but hold on to your application because things can change. And so we, we held on to our application, we got in our car, we went, we went back to Peggy's office, and we filed our paperwork. I think that we saw the integrity with which the clerk's office carries itself that day, in addition to on December 20th when they extended their hours and they were so generous and, and eager to accommodate everyone. And, and so, yes, I've had a very positive experience with, you know, the staff and the administration, the administrative staff of, of, you know, our public servants. Well, you're right. So we were bracing to be turned away. And so we expected to be. Um, but it was surprising, I think, in that um, we, I don't know if I was expecting to feel so let down. It was, yes, we knew what we were, we were getting into, but no, I didn't know how emotionally taxing that would be on me, you know, at that very moment. And so it gave me even more momentum and desire to, you know, to follow through with this case. And it really illustrated for me the, the discrimination that Amendment 3 had, because Moody and I care about each other. Like I said earlier, I couldn't imagine what any other love would be like and, and why, why I wouldn't have access to that, to marriage, because we just happened to be two men. So it, for me, it really did feel terrible. I felt awful and I felt left out. And that really is the worst feeling in the world, is to feel like you can't participate in something that everyone else gets to. And so um, I was really eager to see Amendment 3 fall. Um, and um, it, was, it was a good thing for us to follow through with this case and to, and to, and to file our complaint and, and to challenge Amendment 3.